Mr. Chairman, thank you uh, for holding the hearing today. Um, and we're here because we've had a lot of rail accidents of late, and that's uh, brought uh, additional attention to the importance of rail safety. And I want to thank our, our witnesses, uh, both this panel and the one to follow, for coming today to tell us about some of the lessons that we can learn from these accidents. Um, I think it is important to look in, at the overall context to the rail industry uh, over a long period of time. Um, if you look since uh, the passage of staggers back in 1980, where the industry was partially deregulated, the train accident rates fallen by 76 percent. And so there have been a lot of progress made, a lot of gains made. Uh, the railroads also um, last year invested uh, $25 billion. I think if somebody was asking that question earlier in capital improvements. And these are investments that help keep the railroad system safe, uh, ensure the efficient movement of freight throughout our country, which is something that many of us who represent states that are dependent upon railroads to move freight are, are very uh, interested in. And I think it's important that we, as Congress, um, be careful not to impose undue regulation on the railroad industry, especially if these regulations force the railroads to spend money that might otherwise be uh, used for needed infrastructure improvements. Uh, I've been and continue to be especially concerned about the subject that uh, my colleagues are talking about today, and that's the mandate that frail ro freight railroads and passenger rail lines install uh, PTC technology uh, by December of 2015. I think that's a, an overly aggressive timeline that railroads are going to have a very difficult time uh, meeting uh, for a number of reasons. And in order to implement F, uh, PTC by the date mandated, they're going to have to defer more pressing maintenance and infrastructure improvements. And so uh, I hope to introduce legislation in the, in, the, in the coming weeks along with others that will reasonably extend the deadline for PTC implementation. Uh, I think we need to have uh, additional flexibility for the railroads if we truly want to see PTC systems installed in a manner that recognizes the technological challenges uh, that currently exist for wide adoption and, uh, and ensures that other necessary safety measures are not sidelined. So um, I guess I would uh, count myself among those who have expressed concern about that mandate and what it's going to mean uh, in terms overall of safety and uh, in, in the investment uh, that could be made in other areas. So I, I appreciate the, uh, the insights that the, you all are sharing with us today. And I guess I would like to ask uh, if I would, uh, if I might, one question. And it's kind of been touched on in different ways today, Mr. Chairman. But um, this whole issue of case-by-case uh, -case analysis uh, versus a sort of a blanket extension, uh, there's a five-year extension proposed in the House. Um, the Senate had proposed allowing FRA to approve PTC extensions on a case-by-case -case basis. And Mr. Sable, I'm interested in knowing if the FRA were to consider extensions on a case-by-case -case basis based on the technological, financial, and logistical challenges that would be associated with that, how long would it likely take FRA to consider uh, an application and to make a decision? You mean to get through our process? Right. Yeah, assuming all information was complete, we believe that we could have it done in 30 to 45 days. And how much would you have to devote in terms of resources? Is that a resource-intensive process? Well, it certainly consumes resources, but in our uh, 2014 budget request, we're comfortable that we have requested the personnel necessary to execute our entire safety regime, which would include uh, implementation of PTC. <laughs> Okay. Well, if I might just express a concern that's already been raised here, and that is there, there is not a high level of confidence, uh, I would argue, in right now particularly uh, in, with regard to government agencies evaluating uh, these issues on a case-by-case -case basis, which has already been alluded to. And it strikes me at least that it would make a lot more sense if we're talking about doing some sort of uh, uh, an extension mm -hmm for compliance with this to do it in a way that uh, recognizes that all the railroads are going to have to comply with that and, and, and do uh, some sort of a blanket extension. But um, uh, again, we uh, certainly welcome your uh, input as we consider that. And uh, I think it's really important that this be done in the right way. Because if it's not, if it's rushed, uh, I think it not only, I think it just puts, it puts uh, perhaps uh, people uh, even at greater peril and greater risk. So. Yeah, Senator, I mean, ultimately, uh, Congress acts and we execute. So, you know, we'll execute whatever direction Congress provides for us. And uh, uh, I think we're all saying the same thing, that ultimately it's about finding that right balance 
between ensuring that this is done expeditiously while also making sure that it is done in a safe and reliable manner. So uh, I think we want the same outcome, and it's just a matter of working through, working through details on how we get there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.